going on guys? Castor 11 here back with Pathfinder Adventure Card Game and we're going into the second scenario here. And we beat the first one, Brigand Doom, with our Barbarian Amiri, our Paladin Sela, and our badass wizard Ezrin, who all of them survived. Got some new gear. I build up the cards back to the limits that you need to. Five weapons, two armor, two items, two allies, four blessings for Amiri, for example. 15 card decks. I added some stuff like the magic shield to see to uh, Sila. She got that last uh, Scenario so now she's got that badass shield and a few other things everybody got a couple extra cards I had to get rid of some to get to those uh, requirements So the next scenario in the pearls of the lost coast if you remember it mentioned a mysterious poisoner and this next one is called the Poison Pill. And here is the Poison Pill scenario. Um, local alchemist Alver Pillbug Potaker sells all manners of herbs, but supposedly also drugs, venoms, and worse. His current interest, experimenting with lethally poisonous rat traps, is getting dangerously out of hand. Disarm his deadly traps before someone gets hurt. All right, so we need five locations for a three-player game. So we have the town square, the village house, the city gate, the general store, and the apothecary. And that's these here, town square, village house, city gate, general store, apothecary. Everything's all set up and ready to go. So our villain is Pillbug Potaker, and the henchmen are Poison Traps. So Pillbug will be in one of these, and in the, the other four that he's not in, and one of each will be Poison Traps as the henchmen. So that's interesting. So during this scenario, add two to your checks to acquire allies. So every check for an ally is two more is two points more difficult. And the reward for this scenario is each character draws a random weapon. Nice. The last one, if you remember, was random items. And that's it. So the town square... Who is... The general store might be a good place to start. Um, it has... Quite a bit of items. Two weapons, armor. Not a bad place to, to get some... Try to get some gear before we start out. The apothecary has some spells. Okay, so I think we're going to start. We got our normal setup here that we did last time. Amiri's first, and then our pally, and then our wizard. So Amiri's going to go first. Um, I think we actually are supposed to put everybody somewhere first. So she's going to go to the general store. And so is Sila. And Ezrin is going to head to the apothecary, try to get some spells before we start out here. And hopefully... Okay, so I did find a couple extra dice. Um, I don't. I still only have one D10, but I have two of everything else, which should help a little bit on the rolling. Okay, so I drew cards and decks. Remember, Amiri gets four cards. Has to have a weapon, so she got her icy long spear in her first draw, which is nice. Sila needs to have gets four cards and needs armor. She got her magic shield and her chainmail. And Ezrin gets six cards and needs a spell, and he got three spells, because he has so many spells in his deck that it's going to be hard to not get one. And that's it. So Amiri goes first. We flip a Blessing over for our timer. And she is going to explore at the General Store. So let's check out the General Store for our first exploration. Customers could find a little bit of everything in the town's best stock general store. Mundane goods, weapons and armor, even the occasional potion. Aside from wares both common and extraordinary, the shop also serves as a gathering place for all sorts of town gossip, and the store's owner is among the best informed and connected folks around. Alright, so if during an exploration you encounter anything other than armor, item, or weapons, after the exploration you may reveal a card to explore again. Okay. So uh, Amiri is exploring and she finds an item. So she will only be able to explore once unless she adds something. The Amulet of Mighty Fists. This is pretty sweet. I played a game with my wife um, last night and I played as the monk 
and I had this, and it was pretty useful when I was able to keep a hold of it. So we need Intelligence, Arcane, Wisdom, Divine check for that. Um, it'd be nice to keep that around. But, let's see. Intelligence, Arcane, 4, Wisdom, Divine, 6. So we have a D6 check. Unless we want to use our Blessings right away to try to get that amulet. It is pretty useful because it gives you the magic trait. And there's some enemies that you have to have magic traits to um, defeat. So I think it might be worth really going after that thing. So I think she's going to use her first blessing here. Um, she doesn't get a bonus to her blessing. Yeah. So she's going to use her blessing. So she's going to go with... Um, what are we doing here? Intelligence? Wisdom. Her wisdom is a d6. So two d6s. And we need four. And we got four exactly. Starting again. Exact rolls. I love it. So we get to hold on to this in the hand. And all you have to do is reveal it to add a d4 with magic to your combat check. Oh, but you may not play a spell with the attack trait or weapon. Oh, so it is only for punching. Well, we got it anyway. Really not useful now that I read it. <laughs> Oh, I guess we could punch with her melee strength. Of So we could still get a d12 plus 2 for melee and use it. So it could come useful. Okay. So that is that. And she could, he could use the guide to go again. And I think Amiri will discard this card to explore your location. So she's going back in the general store again. And we find an ally. And according to the general store, if you remember, um, if you encounter anything other than armor, item, or weapons, you can explore again. So she can explore one more time after the Alakite, or Acolyte. Charisma, Diplomacy, Arcane, Divine, 6, and because of our scenario, we get add two to our check. Add two to your checks to acquire allies. Oh, add two to your checks to acquire allies? I'll add two to your checks to acquire. So does that mean we add two to this? Checks to acquire. Yeah, I think so. Or do we add two to our roll? <laughs> I think it's this. So we need an eight. That's how I'm going to play it. I don't know if I'm right on that, but that's how I'm going to play it. If I'm not sure, I'll try to make it harder than easier. Okay, so we need an eight with Charisma Diplomacy or Arcane Divine. And a Miri Charisma six. Charisma, Intelligence, no, Charisma, Diplomacy, Arcane, Divine. We have nothing of that, so it's Charisma of a D6, and we need an 8. So we basically are not going to get this character, and I'm not wasting a blessing on it either. So basically I'm not even going to attempt it. I can't get it, so we're just going to put this off to the side. But because we didn't get an item, a weapon, or armor, we can explore again. And we found a mercenary in the general store, and he's not happy. Um, so he's a 10 to defeat. So we do have our Icy Long Spear, which is awesome. It's two-handed, though, so if we use that, we can't use the shield to defend ourselves if we don't get a good roll here. So we reveal this card to roll your strength or melee die, plus a d8, plus 1. So our strength is a 12. Um, strength or melee. So our melee is a plus 2. And then our icy spear makes it plus 3 with another d8. So basically we need a 7 on this roll. And we got a 16. So we definitely beat that guy. So the mercenary is taken care of easily. And because it wasn't an item, an armor, or a weapon, after the expiration, you may reveal a card. So we can keep going at this general store. 
And here's a weapon. So this will be the last time we can do it. Short bow, um, dexterity ranged three. Okay, so dexterity ranged. Our dexterity is a six. We don't have ranged. So we're just going to go with that. We need a three. And we got a two, so we miss out on the short bow. Apparently we looked at it and decided, eh, don't really want that. So that goes off to the side. And Amiri looks like she's finally done. If she wants, though, you may move at the end of your turn. So does she want to move at the end of her turn? I'm not that it's necessary. It could be useful, like, if you need to go try to close another location at, you know, or something like that quickly. I think she's going to sit at the general store. All right, so Amiri, that was a long turn. She needs to draw a card to get up to four. She got the Matok. Matic, Matak tool, and she's done. So now we flip over round turn two, and it's Sila who is still at the, who is at the general store as well. So this is something I almost never use. I don't think I ever used it. You may examine the top card of your location deck at the start of your turn. If it's a boon, put it at the bottom of the deck. So let's do that. You may examine the top card. So this isn't an exploration. This is just her bonus. It's not a boon, but it is a skeleton. So we know that a skeleton is there in the general store. Interesting. Okay. So it was not a boon, so it stays. That's the start of our turn. So because of that, we can decide to leave. Because we know there's a skeleton there. And we might not want to fight it. And we might not want to because piercing weapons... On skeletons, slashing or piercings make it three more difficult. It's actually, excuse me, an 11. And the only weapon we have right now is a short sword, which has piercing. So it actually makes that check more difficult. So she may move. I think she's going to move. She's not going to be very useful on the skeleton. So I think Sila's going to head over to the town square and see what's going on over here. So all the sound and the life, all the sound and life of the community comes together at this well-trotting square at heart of town. People of all walks enjoy themselves here as they go about their daily business, whether it be shopping for goods, hawking their wares, or meeting with friends. But even here, there are those who lurk in the shadows, eyeing marks for more nefarious purposes. All right town square you may discard a card from your hand to explore during your turn this card may not be recharged okay so she's heading over here and she finds the sanctuary spell interesting uh, wisdom divine which is good for her she can use the spells how many spells can she have she can have one and she's divine so it's a six wisdom divine trait to get this bad boy. She has a divine of two wisdom plus two. So D8 plus two. And she needs a six. So she needs a four. She gets a six. She gets eight. So we get sanctuary. Nice. Right in our hands. Okay. You may discard a card from your hand to explore during your turn. This card may not be recharged. All right, she has a lot of blessings, so I think she's going to use her blessing to re to uh, search again. Not that she's got her sanctuary spell. Sanctuary is useful because it allows you to evade a monster if you don't want to fight it. That's its basic, its a uh, main thing is to help you evade a tough guy. All right, so she's going to search. Oh, and speaking of a tough dude, Hill Giant. Oh, boy. Damage dealt by the Hill Giant is dealt to each character at this location. Fifteen. That might be a good time to use Sanctuary, to be honest. The problem is, when you use it, put that monster on top of the deck, if it came from one. So, I don't know if she can get to fifteen. That's the problem. She has a... Sh uh, short sword 
so she gets a d8 plus 2 plus a d6. That's 14. If we discard, we can add another d6. Whoa. That's a tough-ass guy to fight. Amir, it might be better for Amiri to come here to try to take that guy out. To be honest. Um, she can get some nastiness going with these spears and better rolls. I think I'm going to do that. I think I am going to use Sanctuary to get away from this guy early here. I don't want her to start taking damage early. So, discard this card to choose a character at your location to evade a monster. Put that monster on top of the deck. So he flips back over. She evades away with her spell. Quickly, as a hill giant descends upon her, she casts Sanctuary on herself and sneaks away. Um, a Divine 8 check, I can recharge it instead. So she has Wisdom plus 2 for her Divine. So we need an 8 here. We need a 6. So we got a 4. So this is getting discarded. And her turn is over. So we flip over her new card, Blessing of the Gods. Okay, and we have a hill giant here to worry about. And a skeleton here to worry about. And Ezrin is here, and it's his first turn, and he's chilling at the apothecary. Glass jars filled with dried herbs and jewel-like potions gleam in the soft light of this shop. While most are well labeled, it's impossible to tell if some are healing tinctures or deadly poisons. If you do not explore this turn, after you reset your hand, you may shuffle the top 1d6 cards from your discard pile into your deck. Oh wow, so you get like an automatic heal by just coming here, as long as you don't explore. Well, that's good to know. So if somebody's hurt and you can just head to the apothecary, not take a turn of exploring, and you may and you can kind of heal. Interesting. Okay. Um, oh, so it says it on the back. It also says it there. Same thing. Okay. But Ezrin is going to explore. He wants some spells and a blessing of the gods. So if you encounter this card, you automatically acquire it, the blessings. So that's pretty nice. So I think he's going to use it right away, actually. No, he's not. He's going to keep the blessing of the gods. And he's going to use his uh, standard bearer to explore your location. And he's going to hold on to the blessing of the gods. So he's going to explore again. I find a sage's journal. Interesting. Reveal this card to add 1d4 to your check to defeat a henchman or villain. Huh. Intelligence knowledge 8. I don't think he has knowledge, does he? Oh, he does. So it's a d12 plus 2. And we need an 8. So we need a 6 on this roll. And we got an 11. So we got the sage's journal, which could be very useful. And he's going to get rid of his Night's Watch, and he's going to keep going. And he finds a Find Trap spell on the shelves of the Apothecary. And he's a Wisdom Divine of six. It's a Divine spell. He could use it, though. But at the end, he has to um, banish it if he doesn't have the Divine skill, which he does not have. But he can still use it, and then has to banish it. He can't discard it. Um, he can also give it to another character. If he ends up by Sila, he can give it to her. Um, okay. So we need a Wisdom Divine of 6. And he, only, he has an 8 for Wisdom. So, let's do it. We need a 6. Got a 5. Did not get the Fine Trap spell. So that could put away. Decides against it. And I don't want to discard it a lot, but I want to keep going. So we're going to discard the Sage to explore again. And we find the Sheriff Hemlock hanging out at the Apothecary. Um, he adds to our combat checks. Okay. Charisma Diplomacy 8. And our Charisma is a 6. So that's not good. 
could use our blessing of the gods, but that's not a good idea with him in a way because he actually doesn't get any blessings in his deck when he builds it. So being that he has that blessing, it's nice to have. Um, we can't make that check though unless we use it or somebody else uses it. Sila has quite a bit of blessings. So I think she's going to give her blessing up and say, you know what, here, here's a little help. Ezrin, I sense your need. You can add a die to your check. So his check is a 6, so he gets 2d6. And he needs an 8. So he still needs a good roll. And he gets an 11. Nice. So we get Sheriff Hemlock in our side, who adds to our combat checks. And I think... With all that being said, Ezrin's going to chill. Keep Sheriff Hemlock on his side, not discard him. I don't know, but should he? Because he's just flying through this Apothecary deck. Maybe he should just keep going. Yeah, I think he's going to keep going. He's not running into any problems, really, until now. A goblin commando. Before the encounter, the goblin deals one range combat damage to you, of course. So now he runs into problems. What a goblin commando is doing at the apothecary, I have no idea. Um, so he hits us for one damage right off the bat. And we have no way to stop it but to discard something. As good as the Sage Journal is to add a D4 to your check to defeat a henchman or villain, the Blessing is actually better because it gives us an extra whole die. So we're going to get rid of the Sage's Journal. It's in our discard pile. We can put it in our hand, you know, later. Or if we get healed or at the end of the scenario. It's not gone forever. So the Goblin Commando pops up. Um, and he... Oh, I haven't been adding to, like I'm supposed to, to get the sheriff. I got, I would have got him anyway. So I can't remember if there's someone else that I tried to get and didn't add to for because of the. It's hard to remember everything, man. We got, especially when you're playing three decks. So I will definitely make some mistakes and forget some some bonus things like that. Okay, so anyway, we need a nine for our goblin commando. So. Let's use good old, let's use uh, Lightning Touch. I know we have two Lightning cards in our deck. So we add an Arcane, which for him is Intelligence plus two, and a D12. So we got plus two and a D12, and then we add two D4 to that. So we got two D4. And we need a 9. So we need 7 with all this. So I think we're going to roll what we got. And we got, definitely got, we got 18, 20. So this Goblin Commando gets smoked. But he did get us for 1 damage before we had a chance to even attack him. And now if we succeed at Arcane 6, we can recharge this. So that's another Intelligence plus 2. So we need a 4. And we get a 9. So we can recharge Lightning Touch instead of discarding it, which is always awesome. And I think we're done finally here. Ezrin was just ripping through this deck, but I think he's going to take a break. Because he needs to grab four cards now. No, three cards. Invisibility. No, because before I do that... After you play a spell with Arcane, which you just did, you may examine the top card if it's a spell you put in your hand. Which doesn't really make that much of a difference here, because... It's invisibility. Now we still have to draw, so... Blast Stone. And Lightning Touch again. And that gives him six cards. I'm going to keep the sixth one up there. And I just noticed something on his card that I never noticed. I thought this... Oh, no, I don't get it. I have to check it first. That's what I thought. You have to check this to add one to your check. Okay, so I'm doing it right. 
I thought he was able to add one to all his checks to recharge his cards, but that's you have to level that up first. Okay. So we're done with our first round. 